Welcome to the second part. Now, this is a computer algorithm. Now, we've talked about the definition of computational thinking before. We talked about the different parts, and then we introduced you to algorithm. Now, I want you to have a, a, a better understanding of algorithms. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into algorithm, giving you more examples of it in order to make that transition of solving the problem and making it into a computer program easier. Okay, so now they have different learning out uh, outcome for this video. The first one is applying appropriate sequence and uh, iteration to develop uh, an algorithm. The second learning outcome is about developing an algorithm, uh, an algorithm to draw various objectives, objects. Okay, and we'll start with the first example. I'm going to give you different examples first, and then we'll actually formulate the like a, a, a better uh, definition of what is an algorithm. Now, if you look at this, and I'm asking you to find all the even number in a list. Now, we have about what 10, 50, uh, 10 numbers here. If I, you look at it and says, okay, um, that's easy. Six is even. Two is even. Eight is even. Ten is even. Two is even again, and four. But what if you have thousands of numbers? And what if you have, um, could be millions of numbers? And then if I ask you to do it yourself, it'll be a big problem. So how can we come up with a better way of solving it? Now, if we wanna apply this process of decomposition, abstraction, pattern recognition, and algorithm for it, we can examine these for a minute. And I can say, okay, there is a pattern. A pattern, for example, all even numbers are divisible by two, and then the remainder is zero. Okay, okay, that's uh, can I help me with my solution? The second thing about it is that I have a list of numbers, and these list of numbers they have odds and even and uh, odd. I don't need to worry about the odd, odd numbers. So what I can do, for example, my algorithm becomes for every number in the list. The man, and notice I didn't say for 10 numbers, for 15 numbers, for every number in the list. And that is, you'll see this pattern over and over and over again. Okay, anytime you're dealing with list, the number of elements in that list may not be known. So you need to look at all the elements in that list. What should I do? First, if it's an even number, we notice that the pattern was, okay, if it's an even number, if you divide it by two, I need to divide it by two and check if the remainder is zero. If the remainder is zero, then what? It is even, done. Else, I can just ignore that number and go to the next number. So notice my algorithm becomes finding, go through every element in the list, check, divide by two. There is a, actually in computers, there is a one, this could be done in one process, divide by number by two and get the remainder check if it is zero, and then what? Uh, if it is zero, it's an even number, else ignore it, and then go to the next number until all the numbers in the uh, list is finished. All right, so that is one example. Another example, now this is a little bit more challenging than the first one. I'm gonna let you think about this for a minute. I'm giving you a list of numbers, and I want you to actually find the maximum number in this list. How would you do this? How would you actually do it yourself? It's not a trivial problem, but usually what do you do in your head? I mean, these numbers are what? They're simple. You can maybe one look at it, you can determine the, the maximum. But what if you have again thousands of numbers? Can you do it in your head? Not easily, right? So you need to come up with a solution and tell your computer to do it for you. Now, of course, there are library, there are already programs that do that for you, but these are just examples to help you, help you understand what is an algorithm is about. Okay, so if I do that, if I look at this, usually in your head, what you do, if you wanna go from one number to another number, you look, the first number may be one, okay? I haven't seen any other number. Think about this to the computer. This is what the computer is seeing. I'm dealing with one number at a time, right? I see, I saw one. Okay, one is my maximum now. Okay, then I got the next number. Now, three is my maximum now, compared to one. So the algorithm becomes is that you take 
you start, you, we define some uh, bucket, we call it maximum number, okay, some place to hold this value, okay, we call it maximum number. Now, I start with zero, I'm assuming this all positive numbers, I'm, I'm starting with zero, and then I go through the list. If I say, did I see a number greater than the zero that I have? If I have, then make that maximum number that I have the new number that I saw, all right? So it was zero, I saw one, then one becomes my maximum. I go and go next to the next number, I saw three. Now three is more than one that I had already before, so maximum number becomes three. And then you go through this process until the end. Again, this is a, a trivial way to solve it, it's called a linear search, but it's, it's give you uh, an understanding what, how to think about algorithms, all right? So the algorithm becomes, you start with a, zero, uh, with a number, we make it zero, you go through the, next, uh, the numbers through the list, you look at the first number, is the first number greater than the one that I have already? If it is yes, assign it to the new number, maximum number that I found, go to the next number, go to the next number, and then you repeat that process. When you're done, when you finished all the numbers in the list, then what do you have? You have your maximum number already found, all right? So that is called, uh, that is uh, finding a maximum number. And again, we looked at how to find an algorithm to solve it. The last, now another example here we have is finding even numbers, okay? Uh, or listing even numbers, not finding even numbers. What I want to do is that I, somebody telling me, I want you to list all the even number from one to a thousand or from zero to a thousand. How would you do it? Again, if you look at the pattern here, it's pretty easy. What is the pattern? Two, you start with two, the next number is four, the next number is six. So notice what are you doing? You're adding two to the previous number. So uh, you start with an even number two, for example, and you add two to it. Okay, in this case, we started from zero, but zero, debatable, is it even or odd? But you start with uh, zero and you add two to it, it becomes two and so forth. So the algorithm, how it becomes, it becomes the algorithm for, you start with the first number, we're gonna call that x, and I'm gonna make it equal zero, and then from x to a thousand, all right? And you will see this when we start talking about uh, uh, programming, uh, for loops in programming, you, this, this becomes critical to you to understand. So I start with x equals zero, my x is my number that is gonna change all the time, I'm gonna make it, uh, because I started with zero, I'm going to add two to it, it becomes zero plus two is what? Two. I print it, and then I go to the next number. All right, so again, we start with zero, add two to it, print the value, and go to the next number. Notice what will happen, you start with two, then four, then six, then eight, then ten, and until the, until the number that you desire. All you have to do in this algorithm, you change the number that you wanted to in it, uh, finish with. So if I want 10,000, I'll just put 10,000. If I wanted 100,000, all I do is I just change my, my range and then I'm done. All right? Uh, this is a little bit more exciting and a little bit more uh, complex, okay? All right, so now I'm giving you another example. And the reason we're using graphics here because Python has a very nice and interesting uh, tool it's called Turtle. And it allows you to draw shapes. The, the, what we are trying to do in this course, we are actually trying to help you understand the Python programming language using a fun tool called Turtle. All right? So if i giving you uh, a problem and it says, Please draw the following figure. Well, at the beginning, you will be, if you haven't been exposed to graphics, <laughs> then you'll find this very difficult. And you might say, no way, I'm giving up. I'm not going to do it. But hopefully, after this video, you will, be, you will actually do a lot more interesting shapes than this. All right. So now, if I look at this problem, I can maybe use decomposition. How do I do decomposition here? Notice that this shapes is made out of different squares, all right? So that's my decomposition becomes only I have to know how to draw a square. And after I know how to draw a square, I need to know to draw many squares, 
All right? So if I draw many squares, that would be better. In addition to that, the solution looks like that I, maybe every time I draw a square, I need to turn it a little bit. So if you draw a square, turn it a little bit, draw another square, and repeat this the, uh, however many times you wanted to do it, then your problem is solved. Okay, so that is what we're gonna focus on in this part. So what is the algorithm in computer term? Now we're getting a little bit more serious here. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is that an algorithm in computer terms is that it's a step-by-step -step process of uh, pro uh, producing a solution for a, for a problem which can be translated into a computer code. There are four main components of uh, uh, an algorithm. First, you have data acquisition, sequencing, selection, and iteration. In general, in general, we, I mean, we have a lot of experience in IT programming, and in general, if you know these things, it makes your life a lot, a lot easier when developing computer programs, all right? So how do we draw a square? To draw a square, depend on how big you want your square. We decided to say that the square, each side of the square is 100 dots. Now I've used dots here. Now in, in computer terms, you don't use dots, you use actually pixels. A pixel, think about it, is a, 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 a single dot on your screen, okay? And then there are different resolutions, we're not gonna get into it. Then you draw, you draw a line, and then you move, you turn 90 degree up, and then you draw another line, and then again you move 90 degree, and then you draw another line, uh, and then you move 90 degree, and then you draw another line, and then that's, you're done, all right? So that is how you draw a square. Notice drawing the square becomes, we decompose it, even drawing the square into smaller problems, which is what? Draw a line, turn a degree, turn a, draw a line, turn a degree, 90 degree, and you do it four times, see that repetition? You repeat it again, and so we have already repetition here. You repeat it four times, and you got your square. All right, so now if we wanna solve this problem, I know how to draw a square. So if I wanna draw 100 box, I say from one to the number of boxes, draw a box, change the angle, and go to the next box. All right, so that is how we, uh, uh, how we come up with algorithms. Again, uh, algorithms are, uh, it's a huge area of study. It's not, uh, you're not gonna be an expert in coming up with an algorithm on the first day. The key to it, practice, 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 practice. The more solutions, the more practice you have in this area, your brain start functioning in that manner and then you start to develop i don't want to say computer program develop solutions to your problem a lot a lot easier all right so what we're going to do next we want you to write an algorithm to draw the following objects now <laughs> these a little bit more challenging than drawing a box but if you look at the car, I'm gonna give you a little bit of hands. If you look at the car, first of all, what should you do to draw a car like that? Think about it. What you can do is that you can actually decompose the problem into what? Several problems, right? What kind of problems? For example, draw the wheels. Wheels looks easy, right? I started with wheels. How are the wheels? The wheels are circles, right? Maybe I can draw a circle. Now, the, uh, the doors and the shape and the body looks like a lot more lines and rectangles right so uh, maybe you can uh, i would my my uh, suggestion to you take this and start putting dimension on it dimensions like how long you want the door how long how long you want the body how long you want so put measurements on it and it becomes easy same thing with the computer program the computer the computer is actually easier right why is it easier I don't have those a lot of, uh, you know, angled lines, right? Angled lines, you have to, you know, maybe there's angles that you have to calculate, right? But in this case, it's more like squares, okay? It's all squares. So again, this one might be easier. Think about it from the, you know, from the examples that we gave you and see if it helps you. Um, um, 
or any, anything else that you wanted to do. Now, I hope you find this uh, exciting. My, my advice to you, as you are new students to this, don't be afraid. Do it because don't, all you have to do really to gain confidence is that we're trying to give you these, this knowledge by, in a simplified manner and step uh, by step by step approach. Hopefully it will help you become uh, familiar, at least have enough confidence to continue with this course. I will see you in the next video.